Hello and welcome to Military Vehicle Design. I'm Darren Bacon and this is a sketching tutorial where I will be covering my process for developing the sci-fi vehicle concept. This is a near future concept piece representing the type of vehicle we see in current video games and film. So starting with a blank canvas, uh, typically I start just laying in some line work. Once I get the line work down, um, I'll warp it around or do sort of whatever it takes to kind of get lines and shapes into a spot where I can kind of see something in them. So you see I'm doing that a lot now using the lasso tool and the warp tool to just quickly and really roughly move line work around. Now I pulled open a brush and I am using this what is a rake brush, but it could be anything, it could be a round or a square brush, anything um, that would just really quickly uh, and effectively block in some tonal value so that I can start to squint my eye and look at this thing and, you know, find some interesting silhouette. I'm using a warp tool and now I've gone over with a smudge tool to really loosely smudge around pixels and try to come up with some more interesting original shapes. Everything I'm doing right now is very much in explore mode, just trying to find something that's interesting and unique. And sometimes I'll fall back on my traditional cliche shapes and formal languages, but I'm really trying to push things as much as I can. So if I do draw in something that I find to be too much um, traditional or unoriginal, I can use a tool like warp or use a tool like smudge to alter it and get it away from uh, some of the ingrained styles and forms that I tend to typically sketch. I go back and forth with uh, using value in line a lot personally. I can kind of see uh, form better in line work, but I find that it's easier to um, make judgment calls on the silhouettes in value, obviously. So I'll be doing a lot of back and forth. So here you see I just had some line work and I knocked it down uh, and I'll go back over it again several times. When I'm digital sketching, I am oftentimes trying to emulate the way I would sketch traditionally. The way I learned to draw on vellum and marker paper was that you would block in tones either on the back of the vellum or in a low uh, value in the marker paper and then you'd begin to work over it with darker and darker valued markers or pencil work and so I'm always thinking like that in my digital file I will start really light and slowly get darker as I resolve the form in a way that I find it pleasing the way one would work with vellum would be to start on the back side of the vellum with a marker and almost sketch your drawing once. And then once you find a design that you like on the back of the vellum, you would flip it over and then draw it again on the front side of the vellum. And it would give you a second chance or an opportunity to uh, elaborate or pull forward the things that were working on the back side and discard the things that were working or that weren't working. And so it gave you a second chance, I guess. And it, it also just gave you an opportunity to um, fix your errors. And that's obviously something digitally that we have, um, you know, it's a huge advantage because we have control Z and it's really easy for us to just um, fix our mistakes, which you see me doing endlessly here. I think thinking like that, for me can be um, really useful because I'm thinking about blocking in shadow shapes. So here you see 
I have all these shadow shapes sketched in loosely. And that gives me an opportunity to squint my eyes and and look at this design and say, is this something that, you know, that I can I can tighten up, I could flip the vellum over and really, you know, resolve on the other side or, you know, throw a, um, a, a new layer of complete white on top of it and then drop the opacity so that I can just barely see it and then start over drawing on top of it and fixing all of the errors that I see and leaving the things, the happy accidents that I do like. You can see right now I'm, I'm searching for happy accidents with the smudge tool. I'm really hoping that I can come up with something that's unique and uh, not too um, predictable. And so right now what you see is a front end that's very predictable. And so I'm going to spend some time to try to figure out ways to make it less predictable. And that's going to be the bulk of my um, effort and accomplishment ultimately on this sketch, I believe, is coming up with something that's less predictable and that, you know, is thoughtful because this is a video game vehicle uh, of course it has to have a uh, weapon mounted on a turret on the roof why not so I've got that blocked in you can see I'm I'm painting opaquely right now with a round brush and there's really uh, no fancy tricks here just trying to block in values this process or this part of the process is kind of uh, um, unglamorous. The sketch is really not very good and the techniques I'm using aren't really awesome. And so it is kind of, uh, I don't know, it's not a great sketch right now. It kind of looks like crap, but um, you have to sort of go through these stages to get to a good place ultimately and so you can see that it's a lot of trial and error and just searching for interesting things and so you can see now i'm searching in smudge tool desperately trying to find something cool that i can sort of squint my eyes and see a form in there that i really like that i would have never thought of to draw on my own so i'm just in searching search mode looking looking for cool shapes Cool shapes are so hard to find. Now I've found a cool shape in the front headlamp and I'm happy about it. So I'm going to just quickly tighten it up so that I can move on and, and kind of use this point as a frame of reference of an interesting shape that I like and how can I, uh, you know, build this design out from this one little headlamp. A lot of smudge tools still, still just desperately trying to find an interesting way to make forms move around that are unconventional and not predictable. That's the big goal for us as designers. You can see right now what I'm doing is um, almost just painting in uh, two or three or four values. Really simple. The simpler the better at this point because the less value that we have to deal with, the easier it is for us to sort of just focus on what's important, the light and the dark sides of the form and how those uh, values interact to you know, show different form changes. I know this is gonna be some kind of an off-road vehicle. I'm, you know, in my mind, I'm imagining this is, uh, you know, some hero vehicle for a video game or a film. And I want there to be some realistic attributes like headlamps and I want there to be a bumper and a winch and it's going to have fenders and, you know, ultimately it's going to be a, an automobile looking thing, but it's going to be pushed a lot. And so I'm taking a lot of liberties with proportions and, um, making things up as I go in a way with like suspension, but I'm really trying to make this thing as believable as possible playing with the scale of things so scale for certain things like for instance right now i'm working on the shock absorber in the front uh, suspension so it looks like it's a independent front suspension and it's going to have some coil spring shocks that are um, accepting a lot of the travel of the front suspension and so to to do this sort of thing 
doing some research on how um, these sort of things work can be helpful. Researching um, what what kind of suspensions vehicles like this use. Uh, oftentimes, mistakes that can uh, sometimes you know I can see errors or you see things that are un plausible unrealistic in uh, that sort of thing when it comes to mechanical bits and it's one thing to just sort of say oh it's science fiction and you know it's uh, it doesn't have to make sense but it really helps sell it for the viewer if there is some something that is familiar to him or her and so if you can save some parts of your design to sort of look familiar like a traditional vehicle the way we understand them that'd be helpful. So, you know, making a suspension that's believable is good. Right now I'm using a mixer brush to smudge a bunch of pixels around and come up with an interesting front bumper. You can see I'm just grabbing and pulling a lot of paint, I guess, tones. Again, searching for what the design of this vehicle is going to look like. At this point, I have a really vague understanding of what I'm searching for. And in a lot of ways, it's like maybe sculpting. You know, if you're sculpting from rock, you're removing material to try to find the form in there. And so I'll do that. I'll add material. I'll add um, value, which is, you know, like maybe adding clay. And then I'll, other times, which is, you know, more like traditional clay sculpting and other times I'm more like removing material, which is another form of sculpting. But I guess I'm thinking about um, sculpture a lot in a way, because I'm thinking about how these forms work and I really want them to make sense so that if I had to model this later on, it, I wouldn't have to, um, you know, fake something. I want it all to work. And so when I'm smudging around paint, I'm looking for. Uh, form changes that are believable and that I can make sense of going back in with line work or more value to make sense of these smudges. At this point, I'm starting to get a uh, sketch that looks like a vehicle. And so there I've just uh, grabbed some pixels and I'm warping them around and I'm trying to find uh, some interesting texture in my brushwork that I can preserve ultimately. A lot of those things that are sometimes when you're sketching quickly along the way, some of the, the textures from your brushwork can uh, be quite nice and worth hanging on to, especially for a, if, the, if the ultimate deliverable is a sketch. Thinking about um, what these wheels are and trying to uh, block in some value to roughly estimate the way those masses are working. I'll make sense of it later, but for now, this is just uh, getting uh, value in there so that when I squint my eyes, I can look and see what this vehicle is looking like. And right now, when I'm squinting my eyes, I'm seeing it's uh, not that exciting, so it needs some work, and I'm going to continue working on it. It's uh, It can be a bit of a struggle. I sometimes think of painting like this as almost like you're wrestling it, uh, and it it's a real challenge to, um, you know, win at this sort of thing because you're fighting against all sorts of problems that come up along the way and it can be a real challenge. And so it just takes time and uh, perseverance to kind of stick through it and not give up. I mean, at this stage, the vehicle, in my opinion, is just not that exciting and it's really cliche and it, it, it's not, um, it's just not what I'm looking for. It's just derivative and I, you know, I've seen it before. And so it's just going to be a matter of um, sticking with it and really, you know, persevering and, and until the end and trying to find a um, solution that is, I am happy with. You know, ultimately this is going to be the sketch that you see at the opening of this video. And we are pretty far from that. So, it, you know, even if, you know, look at what the final result is versus where we are now. You can tell that I spent a lot of time and energy to just really stick with it and not give up because this, this could have been a really easy point for me to just give up and say, Oh, well, it's not working. 
it just looks like another dumb, you know, cliche, uh, you know, sand truck thing. Uh, doesn't we don't need another one of those? So it's going to take a little, um, a little bit of persistence to see this one through. You can see I am uh, using the smudge tool now and trying to find some mistakes or find some uh, happy accidents, just moving around big chunks of pixels. Just to quickly go over some of the tools I've been using, things that I will typically use for a sketch like this is a uh, round brush tool to block in, a square brush uh, to block in, and usually a round and a square eraser. I will uh, set masks on my layers I've sketched in and then use the same tools that I painted with to then sketch out of them to sort of erase them using a mask. But I preserve uh, the original marks in case I need them as opposed to say erasing them. I'll use uh, masks for that. I use the lasso tool a lot. I will use a lasso tool to make a selection of my brushwork and then warp it around or stretch it to use it as texture to preserve the um, sketchiness of my sketch using existing texture that I've used, that I've already created. And then after that it's done, I, I typically go over using line work with just a very simple uh, round brush. Another tool I use is uh, shape tools. I'll use a line tool with aliasing left on, and I like to use custom shapes to do ellipses for this uh, type of sketch. I'll have an ellipse shape set into a custom shape tool. And I'll use shapes like circles and squares to block in uh, chunks of value and warp them around once I've laid them in on a new layer. There you can see I just laid in an uh, ellipse, uh, a custom shape circle that I then stretched into perspective and now I'm using a uh, shape of a circle and stretched into perspective as if to uh, get some ellipse shape on the hood of the vehicle. And I've then stretched it in to get it more and more setting into the perspective of the scene. So I'm going to just keep uh, making adjustments here and I'm trying to get the sketch to fall in line with the perspective grid that I'm more or less visualizing. Um, and this sort of thing, I'm just trying to ballpark it. Sometimes when you're working in perspective, if things are too perfect, it can almost be a problem. So it's okay to, to uh, sort of fudge perspective a bit. Um, but it's important that it's close enough. So there's a, definitely a fine line, uh, would not hurt at any point to, um, you know, throw down some line work and try to block in a perspective, um, grid or use a tool to do that. So much of what I'm doing right now is using the lasso tool to grab big sections of the painting and just quickly move them around and warp them and, you know, paint over it. You can see that my layers are like the last five layers are just, you know, big grabs of flattened section. And, uh, I'm using a copy merge to copy, um, sections and, and just warp them around to kind of block in the overall macro shape of the thing and get everything working in perspective together. And, uh, I'm going to spend a little more time on this weapon and, and kind of get a more interesting silhouette. And I'm looking for all sorts of opportunities to have interesting silhouettes and to work shapes back into other shapes. Um, values within values and, and more detail that I can extrapolate on and continue to refine when I move into line work mode. This door that I'm painting in is, um, I'm doing it for myself. It's just kind of a, a reference point for me to, to sort of prove that this would work. And so I need to have a door there so that I can kind of think about the forms and would it be okay without a door and what would it look like with a door. And, um, if I'm going to remove the door, then I want to make sure that it looks like it would functionally work with the door. And so it's just more like doing due diligence to, to check and make sure everything's lined up. Um, I'm, you know, experimenting, trying out different things, seeing if I like it. Ultimately, I don't like it, so I delete it. And now I have taken all of my layers that I had been making and I flattened them into one layer and 
then lowered the opacity in a new group. So you can see that I've set up two groups. I've got a group of nothing but my sketch, my original sketch that I've been working on the last 25 minutes. And I've lowered the opacity and I have a new group where I'm doing line work. This is exactly what I mean uh, or meant when I was talking about imagining working over a sketch on vellum. Uh, if this were a vellum sketch, I would have spent all that time developing my original sketch on the back of the vellum. And then the lowering the opacity is essentially flipping the vellum. And this is my shot to now really nail all of the exploration that I did previously for the last several minutes. And I'm going to basically run with it now. I, I've committed to a lot of these shapes and I can kind of squint my eyes and look at it now at lower opacity and see a really cool design in there that I can now pull out using line work. This is my chance to fix all of the things that were bothering me before that had I pursued it in value and or tone would have taken a long time. That's um, what is great about line work is it can be a huge time saver and it can also get you really far and it's really great for styling exercises too like this because it's given me an opportunity to really quickly pull out the important um, uh, bones I guess of the sketch like the really important uh, surface changes and I, I can use line to express that and if I were to do it in value it would take a really long time to refine everything in a perfect way and it can kind of be a rabbit hole uh, when you start to work in value like that especially for a hard surface sketch like this it would be a real time consuming effort and I think if you were going to do it in value you would probably want a good line drawing anyways and so ultimately this doesn't really end up being a waste of time it's it's the way to sort of nail your design and you know, doing the line work like this is, in my opinion, the, the best way to go about it. If I wanted to continue further, I would add value to this line sketch when it's completed. Because this is my shot to really push and pull the design, you know, in a, in a final capacity. I work on a, a Wacom uh, Intuos. And uh, so I, I like to sort of sketch and get things as close as I can and then use warp tools or transform tools to get the line to move into a more graceful way. And I, I find I have way more control over it than if I were to just draw it out myself or if I, was, or if I were to use a Cintiq. I sort of like having the control of the warp tools. You can see that when I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking some time to look at my underpainting or my original sketch and I'm just sort of searching in there and using the line tools to pull out forms that I find important and interesting and I'm finding cool shapes and I'm trying to figure out a way to resolve those shapes to make a really interesting design and so this at this point in the process it's really all about um, being careful about what you're drawing I'm gonna Trying, I'm trying to make really smart decisions. At this point, I want to just look at my sketch and analyze it and ask myself questions like, you know, is does this look good? Is this the best solution I can come up with for this area? How can I resolve this area? And, and I'm thinking about um, the overall design and echoing, and I'm thinking about flow and I'm sort of looking at the whole thing and I'm making uh, calls, judgment calls on, on how everything's working together and is it balanced. And these are all sort of like design principles that I'm thinking about. And um, you can do the same, you know, you look at it and, and just sort of ask yourself, like, does this look good? Do I like this? And uh, that's really all I'm doing at this point. And then when I'm finding something that I like, I'm just going for it. Uh, as confidently as I can with my line work. I'm trying to be um, not too uh, careful with my line work. I'm being really uh, loose and almost gestural 
and that's because I'm trying to keep this going at a good clip. Um, but at the same time, I'm not painting super fast. I'm being really intentional about what I'm doing. So I'm looking at the canvas and I'm making a decision and then I'm marking the into us. Whenever I'm marking and making a line, I'm, I'm just trying to be as bold as possible. I'm, I'm making choices and I'm just sticking with it and just, you know, putting down the marks. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I can retry it, but I really want it to be um, just sort of as fluid as I can make it, I guess. While at the same time, you know, getting down my intentions. You can see I've opened up my reference folder where I have several images saved of what I was hoping to ultimately, uh, you know, pull this this vehicle in the direction of. I started to sketch in a gun and you could see it wasn't working. And so you can now, you know, you get the idea of how powerful reference is because you can see that I am um, now just basically drawing my reference image into my sketch. The reference I'm pulling from are the top two weapons and I'm kind of colluding them together to come up with a interesting um, weapon up there, but based on the two different designs and also that kind of make it fit into my overall aesthetic. I imagine this would be a uh, uh, top of the cab mounted weapon that a uh, occupant could man from the rear of the passenger and the driver. You can see I'm still trying to get all my perspective to work. It's not perfect, but it's kind of, uh, you know, it's definitely just sort of put in there in a way that is working good enough for the sketch. I'm still using um, my value as a way to block in things. As you can see, I blocked in darks and I'm using darks and I'm using lights to sort of get a really, uh, high contrast, punchy sketch. And the idea behind that is that, um, it gives me an opportunity to sort of view this as a graphic design exercise. And I can squint my eyes and look at the shapes and make judgment calls on whether or not I like them or if they're interesting enough. As you can see, I'm sketching in some rough tire tread just I need something to uh, just sell the viewer that this is an off-road vehicle. The tire ref I have is from the uh, sketch of the Ford Baja truck. It's nothing very extraordinary. I was thinking about designing a tire tread, but I decided that would be too much work for this sketch. Um, if this were something for a client or for ultimately uh, a vehicle that was going to be in a game or something, I would spend way more time trying to you know, resolve the tire tread pattern, but just uh, for the sketch purposes, these simple tire treads will do the trick. You can see I'm working in a uh, dark pass. This is uh, the darks of the sketch. I'm going to have these darks. This big dark shape is sort of what's going to represent all the shadow. And uh, anytime you're you're working in darks like this, it's your opportunity to come up with the coolest shape you can come up with. And so. Um, yeah, I just think every every time we make a shape, it's an opportunity to make a coolest shape possible. So when you're sketching like this, just every time you put down a mark, think, you know, is, is this as cool as I can make it? And just, you know, don't leave any missed opportunities in your sketch. Try to make every uh, move that you make be the, the best decision that you can make and, and, you know, the coolest shape or the coolest line. That's definitely um, a really important thing to think about as you're working. As you can see, I'm still not really being super careful. This is about getting down the gesture. I'm not trying to nail every single line or every single ellipse. It's going to be close, but it's not going to be perfect. And I just don't have the time or the, uh, I guess I don't really care enough because ultimately I just want the sketch to work really as a gesture. This is just supposed to get across the idea. So if it doesn't, if everything's not perfect, that's okay. It just really needs to communicate my concept. You can see as every time I, I make an adjustment to the shadow shape, I'm thinking about the perspective and I'm thinking about, again, this cool, shape and how can I make the coolest shape possible and how can I be the 
you know, as economic as possible. I want everything I do to be highly economic. I want to be able to look at this image and, and right off the bat, make a really good judgment, make judgment calls about is this thing in perspective. And so I have to, every sort of pixel counts. And so you need to do everything you can to make your uh, image be in perspective. You can see I, I've trimmed down the shadow shape in the back because I've decided that it would be more impactful if I had less black and that white shape back there was more interesting. The white shape, the negative space that is below the rear axle and above the, the shadow underneath the vehicle. Again, every shape here we have, I mean, the, the negative shapes in between the tires and the undercarriage, those are opportunities to make cool shapes too. So just always be trying to make cool shapes. I'm quickly sketching in, I, you know, obviously I, I'm sketching in this, um, some exhaust board or some sort of a, a port out of the rear of the vehicle. And I'm, I'm just opaquely painting this in. I'm not too worried about the fact that this is a line work pass. I have, I have layers that are just lines and I have layers that also are containing value. And I'm, I'm really not worrying about it. I'm just trying to move forward. I'm thinking about progress and getting the sketch to completion. So, um, it would be nice if I could contain every line to the line layer and every, uh, value shape as a value shape layer, but I'm just not doing that. I'm just really quickly, I have several layers and I'm worried more about getting, you know, cool shapes and then a really neat sketch and less about layer management. If I really need to, I can go and remove, um, you know, value from line layers later, if that's an important thing for me. Like if I need to deliver this as a line work sketch that also has um, tones and values underneath it, I can do that later on. Right now I'm just really worried about moving forward as fast as possible. So I'm mixing and matching um, line and shape and value on top of uh, existing line layers and, and just not too worried about it. Like here, I'm, I'm just painting straight onto this layer even though it's containing a lot of line work. I'm going in and I'm trying to have really unique shapes back here and I'm experimenting with ways to break up all these areas into the most unique shape patterns I can. Even if it means adding a little noise down there to like indicate this is like some dirt that the vehicle is sitting on. I'll continue to do that in the future moving forward as well. You can see that the sketch is starting to get to the point where I'm getting really happy with it. This is um, the moment I've been waiting for. Uh, it's been a really frustrating uh, last several minutes, you know, watching this thing come together because it takes, it can take a lot of energy to get your drawing to this point because so much of it has just been exploring and value. And I feel like value is a great way to explore, but it's really hard to see, you know, the intentions until you get to this line point. And once you get here, it's a real relief to, to, to know that, you know, your design is going to work and that you've made all the right choices in the line work and you're starting to get happy with the way the thing is looking. For a while, I thought it'd be a good idea to have a different tread pattern on this rear tire, but ultimately I abandoned it. It could be cool, but I just don't have the uh, time to, to think about it. And I think also it would look a little unbalanced. And if you look at my reference, the rear tire uh, of that vehicle is also the same tread pattern as the front tire. And it makes sense because if you had a spare tire, you would want the spare to, to work on the front or back. So I decided ultimately to remove the really chunky sand tire looking thing in the back and make it match. Uh, you can also see that I've added in a, a shadow pass to drop a shadow from the canopy onto the seat. That just really helps everything kind of sit. It makes it seem a bit more real and believable. And so uh, anytime you can do that, it's really good to drop, start dropping shadows and use shadows to help sell the form as well as you lay them on there. Uh, I've using the line tool to sketch out a palm tree. So yeah, line tool and square brushed. I'm, I'm just really, really quickly hacking in a, what it would look like some sort of sort of a palm tree. This is going to be something that I'm going to use to reflect into the, uh, windshield to sort of give the illusion that this uh, vehicle is sitting in, in a desert environment or an environment with palm trees. And you can see that it, it, do, it does sort of help give a little more realism and then add some scale. And I'm using the warp and I, I pasted it into a, uh, into a mask. And now I have this 
what looks like the reflection of a palm tree in the window. I'm going to use the palm tree in the background as well. I'm going to have a, a piece of a, I'm going to have a dark tone that I'm going to use as a background. And, uh, I'm going to have a bit of the palm tree indicated in there as well to sort of help sell that this thing sitting in a scene. I have a marker texture that I made. I'm just calling it in. It's, it's actually not really a marker texture. It's a brush that I have that sort of emulates a marker and I'm going to be dropping that into the background to sort of give the illusion that this is a marker sketch. A lot of times I spend, um, a lot of effort trying to make my, digital sketches look as if they're traditional. It's definitely, um, not necessary. It's just something that I'm into for some reason, uh, probably because I used to do traditional marker sketches and it just is, um, I romanticize it a bit, I guess, and I'm kind of into it. So I don't know. Some people might not like it, but, um, I'm into it. So here I, here I go to sort of make marker sketches digitally. I'm going to look for some reference, um, for a some sort of military guy. I've got a little bit of reference here. And so I'm going to pull him into Photoshop and kind of sketch him out. My drawing will not be that great, but I'm going to have to use a little, uh, photo ref to, uh, extrapolate on this dude and then paint over him to sort of make him match my scene. Yeah. You can see that I'm trying to make this guy fit in here. And so I'm just going to drop his opacity and start to paint in directly on top of him in a really uh, loose and fast and indicated way. I'm really all about indication at this point, everything, um, whatever, whatever I can do to indicate and make the, uh, the most bang for the buck, the, 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 the coolest image with the least amount of work. It's about indication. It's about economy, how, much information can you translate with the least amount of um, brushwork or line work? You can see just quickly turning on and off the uh, photo that I'm tracing that I can kind of check and make sure that everything's working good. And it is, so I'm just going to keep moving forward and just, you know, squint my eyes at this photo and try to pull out the important parts that will help my line sketch and uh, leave the rest white that I don't need to mess with. Having a character in here is, is definitely not necessary, but I thought it'd be nice to have uh, to sort of help scale and to uh, sell this thing. It's a bit more believable having a, a soldier who's standing ready to, you know, take off in it if he needs to. Just kind of helps the drawing, I guess. Not super necessary. You can see that I'm just being as careful as I can about scale and making sure that he looks like he would fit in that seat. This looks like a really large vehicle now that I have a, a person standing next to it. So, um, that's okay. I mean, I don't really have any constraints, but just be aware that, you know, maybe if this were, if this were having to meet some sort of, um, dimensions that uh, we'd have to adjust it if this was too big, but for my purposes, it's fine. I'm spending some time and using the line tool to clean up this guy's goggles and I'm just trying to make it make him look as cool as possible and make him look like he was effortlessly sketched in there, even though I spent, you know, quite a bit of energy tracing a photo to make sure he looked cool. If I were to have just drawn him in, we would have had some pretty poor results, I'm sure. So use some reference and just kind of make good decisions and trace it if you have to. And, um, you know, whatever works, it's fine with me. I, I don't mind tracing photos at all for this sort of thing. I'm starting to get really happy with the sketch and I'm, I'm just making lots of little adjustments here and there and, um, you know, asking myself if I'm happy with it or if I, uh, don't like anything, then it's really just a matter of going in there and fixing it and bringing things, um, you know, to a place where I'm happy with it. Now I'm going over to my original underpainting or marker sketch or whatever you want to call it. The original drawing that I did that was flattened into a single layer and I'm, erasing it out and, uh, I'm leaving some spots in, but I'm erasing spots out. I'm trying to make this seem like it was, a uh, a line sketch, an effortless line sketch, very similar to how I just drew over the photograph and the same way I drew over the photograph of the soldier. It's basically the, obviously, as you just saw the same thing I did with my original sketch, 
I made my original uh, value sketch. And then I, just like I drew over the soldier, I just drew over the value sketch. And it gave me an opportunity to uh, make uh, decisions along the way and edit it down to the, to the things that were most important to sell my idea. In a lot of ways, it was just an editing exercise. And I'm trying to edit it down to the simplest uh, forms that, uh, that exist. And here I have my palm tree. I'm trying to work back into my background. So I'm just going to spend a little time to get my palm tree in there. Unfortunately, I did not save my palm tree. My palm tree got cropped because I had the crop tool set to delete pixels. So I get to spend um, a little effort to recreate it a bit. But that's okay. It's no problem. It's a really, really loose thing that isn't that important in the background. So I'll just kind of hack together a new one. All these things aren't super necessary. The palm trees in the background, the soldier guy, they're definitely, you know, just kind of dressing to make the image um, more compelling, but it's not necessary. So I could have very easily just ignored them and left them out, but what the heck? Why not? Uh, here I made a selection on the windshield where the uh, palm trees are in the darks. What would happen in real life if you check references is that um, if there was a shadow of a palm tree or any shadow on glass like that, what would happen is you would see through the shadow and where it was a uh, reflection, you would have less chances to see what's behind it. So because um, the palm tree is indicating a shadow on the windshield, I'm using that as an opportunity to kind of um, use use value is going to draw in a, a pillar to make it to have that a pillar look more substantial to the viewer and now i'm uh, stretching a highlight into perspective and a gradient into perspective on the um, a pillar close to us to kind of help sell this thing as a uh, reflective surface and now i'm going to spend a little more time going into this uh, winch and just kind of indicating some cabling Again, everything that we're doing now is all about indication, the quickest and easiest way to sell our idea via indication. Indicate in some metal bits to support the winch. And it's just a really quick process. I'm really only concerned with how it looks when I squint my eyes and how when I zoom out and does it really look like, does it appear real, you know, or is all the scale working? Well, we're getting close to the end. Uh, in this demo, we've covered uh, lots of tools I use when digital sketching, uh, a lot of uh, different brushes as well as techniques that I use um, for editing my value and line work using masks, uh, a lot of shape tools, shape tools stretch in perspective, and just sort of my overall uh, sketching philosophy digitally, how I like to work uh, as if I'm working on a marker sketch in real life and trying to emulate that in the computer. And it not only does it sort of give you a certain look, but it also um, is definitely a certain process. And so I like to think of the process as being a really important way of how I came to this design conclusion. And uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's a really powerful tool to sort of work like this because it's really fast and it gets you really far. And, you know, I could probably do several of these a day, which would give me a lot of really sort of high end, uh, concepts that are easily viewable by an art director or a production designer or a director. This is definitely something that we could take and, uh, show to just about anybody and, and share our ideas and decide if this is worth pursuing in 3d or, continue exploring in sketch form. This would be a great opportunity uh, to make changes and, and continue to iterate on this design, even just create a new layer group and uh, flatten everything and lower the opacity. And we could go even higher, higher, higher fidelity, tightening in and making more and more uh, refined decisions as we move along. That's the really beautiful part about this. This process can just kind of continue on um, exponentially. And we can continue to refine the design until, you know, it's completely resolved as if it was a 3d model. And that way, when we hand it off to a modeler, we model it ourselves. Uh, there's really not a lot of room for error and that's super important. I believe 
I'm just making a few final adjustments to get you know the tire tread to match and the rear tire and, and I'm indicating in some rear tire tread a lot of times with these sketches it's a lot of a lot of uh, just playing catch up when you get a point resolved you need to make sure that everything else is sort of to the same place as the other areas I'm Darren Bacon um, I've been uh, sketching for you today and also adding the commentary and um, narration if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or questions section below, and I will do the best I can to get back to you as soon as possible and with as much detail as I can. Uh, please don't forget, if you like what you saw, uh, to please subscribe and also uh, follow me over on Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, and Twitter. Thank you very much.